Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After the mass extinction event at the end of the Permian, multiple lineages of sauropsid reptiles began their return to life in the ocean. Among the most famous and well-known products of this period of experimentation were the plesiosaurs, a group of often long-necked, fairly graceful marine reptiles that were highly successful and diverse during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. True plesiosaurs emerged by the very end of the Triassic roughly 203 million years ago, evolving from smaller, more basal ancestors that developed over the course of the period. The earliest known relatives of the plesiosaurs first appeared soon after the end Permian extinction event, being members of the diverse clade Sauropterygia, which also produced the bizarre Atopodentatus and the shellfish munching placodonts. Plesiosaurs and their cousins were united in the broader group Eosauropterygia, which would have been ancestrally small lizard-like animals that lived along the coastlines of ancient Pangaea. Indeed, the basal pachypleurosaurs were good examples of such early forms. Like many Triassic marine reptiles, it appears that the centre of their diversification was located in what is now China, which was a tropical coastal region bordered by warm shallow seas at this time. Pachypleurosaurs tended to resemble long-bodied lizards with small heads, peg-like teeth and paddle-like limbs. While retaining functional limbs with unfused digits, their limb girdles were greatly reduced, suggesting that these animals were already tied to the sea. Well-preserved fossils have shown that pachypleurosaurs were small, ranging between 20 centimetres and a metre, or up to 3.3 feet long, feeding on small fish and crustaceans. Unlike more derived Eosauropterygians, they relied on their relatively long tails as well as their limbs for propulsion, swimming in a style intermediate between the so-called underwater flight of plesiosaurs and the crawling motions of modern freshwater turtles. Like true plesiosaurs, they gave birth to live young. The pachypleurosaurs died out by the Middle Triassic roughly 227 million years ago, and were largely replaced by the larger and more derived nothosaurs. Averaging about 3 metres or 10 feet long, these animals possessed a near-global range and were somewhat like modern seals and sea lions, feeding on fish and cephalopods in coastal regions across Pangaea. In many respects, they resembled larger versions of the pachypleurosaurs, except with proportionally larger skulls and more needle-like teeth, well suited for grabbing slippery prey. Also in the early Triassic, another more specialised lineage emerged, the Pistosauroids. Once thought to have evolved directly from the Nothosaurids, more recent studies have found this group to be more of a grade leading up to the true plesiosaurs instead. These were more well adapted for active swimming than the Nothosaurs, possessing flippered limbs and shorter tails, as well as stiffer vertebral columns, shifting towards a purely limb-powered method of locomotion. In fact, pistosaurs would have already generally resembled the later plesiosaurs in appearance, although despite this were probably still largely limited to coastal environments. Their shoulder girdles remained weak, their pelvises could not support the power of a strong swimming stroke, and their flippers were blunt. The type genus, Pistosaurus, was native to what is now France and Germany during the Middle Triassic, measuring about 3 metres or 10 feet long. The skull was relatively small and pointed, while the neck was fairly elongated, resembling the condition in later plesiosaurs, although the palate was more similar to the more basal nothosaurs. Its bones were dense, with the living animal almost certainly being active and endothermic like modern cetaceans and the contemporary ichthyosaurs, although it swam using what is referred to as an underwater flight style, albeit in an early stage of development, wherein the left and right flippers on each side of the body would beat down at the same time. Its fairly close relative Augustosaurus was quite similar and also lived in the Middle Triassic, native to the US state of Nevada between 244 and 242 million years ago. This genus also measured up to 3 metres long, utilising its long, laterally flexible neck and small sharp teeth to feed on fish and cephalopods. The Italian genus Bobosaurus was slightly larger, potentially up to 4 metres long, and seems to have possessed a stockier build with a comparatively short neck, showing that both long-necked and short-necked forms already existed among the basal precursors of the plesiosaurs. It would be from animals similar to this that the first of the true plesiosaurs were developed by the end of the Triassic. This group was characterised by the development of reinforced shoulder girdles, flatter pelvises and more pointed flippers. Other adaptations allowing them to colonise the open ocean included stiff limb joints, an increase in the number of phalanges of the hand and foot, 
a tight lateral connection of the finger and toe bones, as well as a shortened tail, a rich radiation of plesiosaurs is known starting from the early Jurassic, which indicates that the clade had already partially diversified during the late Triassic. Although remains from this time are highly fragmentary, the common ancestors of all plesiosaurs were probably relatively short-necked animals, similar to the aforementioned Bobosaurus, but rapidly evolved into a variety of body types. Among the most basal members of the group were the Romaliosaurids, which first appeared at the Triassic-Jurassic boundary about 201 million years ago, and would become among the first truly large Sauropterygians. Members of this family possessed a wide size range, as well as variable neck lengths, indicating a variety of different niches. The vast majority of species are known from fossil deposits in the southern UK, with only two genera found outside this region in North and South America respectively. Potential early forms such as Stratosaurus were very modestly sized, measuring just 2 metres or 6.6 .6 feet long, but soon began to develop larger body sizes, as in the case of the genus Atychodracon, which reached over 5 metres or 16 feet long and possessed a large, powerful skull. While most early Epistosauroids fed on a diet of small, soft prey, Atychodracon was among the first of the clade to target larger animals, including ichthyosaurs and other smaller plesiosaurs that lived in the same ecosystem, such as the genus Plesiosaurus itself. Meanwhile, the slightly later Euryclidus was a fast-swimming, barrel-bodied animal with prominent shoulder girdles indicating a powerful downstroke. Its skull was relatively small, indicating a diet composed of fast-moving fish. However, by far the most massive member of the group was the genus Romaliosaurus itself, which could reach about 7 metres or 23 feet long, a powerful predator which roamed the seas that covered what is now Yorkshire and Northamptonshire between 183 and 175 million years ago. Romaliosaurus had a medium-length neck, on the end of which had a strong, yet relatively small skull. The animal was not as specialised for macro predation as the more derived pliosaurids would be, which possessed massive skulls and far shorter necks. Nonetheless, Romaliosaurus would have been a top-order carnivore in its ecosystem. As a whole, Romaliosaurids died out in Europe after the early Jurassic, with two genera, Borealonectes and Maresaurus, from Canada and Argentina respectively, persisted into the Middle Jurassic about 161 million years ago. The group probably declined due to competition with the Pliosaurids and the Plesiosauroids. The former also appeared close to the Triassic-Jurassic boundary, with the family being most closely associated with the highly derived later members such as Pliosaurus and Chronosaurus, which reached massive sizes and possessed huge skulls up to 3 metres or 10 feet long. However, early Pliosaurids were significantly smaller and were originally long-necked animals, such as the oldest and most basal representative, Thalassiodracon, which measured just 1.5 metres or 4.9 feet long. Another early form, Atombrosaurus, named after Sir David, was overall very similar but larger at over 4 metres. The clade containing the huge macro-predatory forms would appear during the Middle Jurassic. The Plesiosauroids also developed during the Early Jurassic, with the most basal member probably being the genus Plesiosaurus itself. Again native to the UK, this animal was notable in possessing a greatly elongated neck, more so than in other early plesiosaurs, a trait which would be taken to an extreme in some later Cretaceous forms. It was also quite small, being around 3 metres long, with its proportionally tiny skull and sharp interlocking teeth making for an effective fish trap. Unlike their pliosaurid cousins, plesiosauroids, with the exception of the short-necked polycotylids, were probably slow swimmers. It is likely that they cruised slowly below the surface of the water, using their long flexible necks to move their head into position to snap up unwary fish or cephalopods. Their four-flippered swimming adaptation may have given them exceptional manoeuvrability, so that they could swiftly rotate their bodies as an aid in catching prey. Like all plesiosaurs, they were endothermic and gave birth to live young with evidence from the late Cretaceous demonstrating that these reptiles had a K-selected reproductive strategy like modern cetaceans, investing high levels of parental care in a single offspring. This is quite unlike other lineages of marine reptiles. This selection of traits may have propelled these animals to early success after the extinction event at the end of the Triassic, which wiped out all of the truly enormous ichthyosaurs. By the Middle Jurassic, the adaptable plesiosaurs radiated into a huge diversity of forms, 
with far too many species to be covered here, and therefore deserving of their own future videos. Thanks for watching everyone, the next episode will be covering the first Triassic theropod dinosaurs, which has become a more controversial topic in recent years due to the shifting placement of the Herrerasaurids and animals like Eoraptor, which are now thought to be early Sauriscians and Sauropodomorphs respectively, making it more difficult to identify which Triassic dinosaurs are actually true theropods. Consider supporting me on Patreon to contribute your own ideas for future videos, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!